Parents also told us they see grades improving, attendance is up, faculty morale is soaring. What's gone? The violence in the hallways, the drugs in the street, and the reputation of being a poor school. You can get to your class and you can sit down and in peace and quiet learn your lessons. And that's what school's all about. With your background, right? Mm -hmm. You have this extensive background with counseling mm -hmm. and now you, you oversee all these counseling programs within the district. How significant is a person's mental and emotional health to their academic progress? You know, if a student can't focus because of issues they might have at home, issues they might even have within the school, uh, they're not going to be, or it's a challenge for them to be successful academically. So I think as educators, it's so important. How was uh, your schooling? And, 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 and let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. At 14, when you got into the business, were you still going to school or did you jump head first into your career? Well, um, we're gonna go back a little, we're gonna go okay. a little bit before that sure. until we get to that, up to that point. Um, growing up in Queensbridge, which is the largest housing project in the world, not just in the city, it's the largest in the world, as far as tents and occupants go. Because usually they say that there's 10,000 on paper, 30,000 any given day. That's like when your cousins come stay, friends come stay, this one lives with somebody, you know, so they say 30,000 any day. So growing up in that type of neighborhood is like growing up in, in side of a small city. Mm. And so everything you needed was actually there. You didn't have any reason to leave Queensbridge. So a lot of your education, everything took place there. Um, my mom, uh, she's, a, she's a wonderful woman and she's truly a visionary. So she sees things ahead of time. And I wanted, I pleaded and begged, I wanted to go to this school called 111. 111 was just a block away from the projects. And it was the fact that because we never really left the projects at that time, you wanted to actually go to school with everyone from the project. You just wanted to. And you know, my mom was like, no, you're not. You know, you, I'm signing you up with this program called a bus child. And a bus child meant you had to get on a school bus and they took you outside of your area, outside of your district, because they didn't call it districts at that time. Back then they were still calling it area. Mm -hmm. They were still calling it neighborhood. They were still calling it your place. So you had to go outside of your neighborhood and go into another neighborhood, go into a, and be exposed to another entirely different culture. Mm -hmm. And guess where you would experience education from that level? My mother was like, that's what we're gonna do. Yes. But I'm just interested when you had this negative clash mm -hmm. and you were referred to being evaluated, what have you, did this, this perception of you carry throughout other teachers in the building? Of course, because when I got to his class, he had already heard that. So, you know, he he immediately wanted to stop that that negative. I was on I was one of the I was on a track team. I was on a basketball at the, in third grade. I was the the fastest kid in the school. Had probably the highest grades, but in their minds, I was a behavioral problem. Mm. You know, went to junior high school, two old boys, right in the hood. Um, made some decisions that I thought that, uh, you know, the, the circumstances I was seeing educationally, I, I just wanted to see something different. Um, wound up taking the SSAT, uh, wound up getting accepted to this program called The Better Chance. Um, ABC connected me with some uh, private schools, so I wound up going to St. George's School in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, that took me to Williams College. Williams College took me to Harvard Graduate School of Education. Uh, and then Harvard Graduate School of Education took me to St. John's right by my doctor. So let, let me stop you for just a quick second. Would right. you say that that you going into private school opened up the doors for your uh, current success now? So, and, and it teaches children white supremacy and black inferiority. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that these things are said, but they're carried out in the policies and practices. So while people use the word random scamming, there's no such thing as random scamming because white kids are not random scammed, mm -hmm. right? There is no white kids that are stopped and frisked. They say that that's random. It's not random. The perceived lack of support on the part of urban school principals for these crucial community building activities has resulted in a high turnover rate in the principal. I agree. Um, 100% correct. Uh, we do.
do get judged on how we perform on state exams. And to me, at times, uh, that can be misleading. Uh, because for many of our communities, uh, we know how kids are going to perform on these state exams. I mean, the research has been done. So you basically know which neighborhoods are going to perform well and which aren't. So in terms of that uh, uh, um, social capital uh, is, uh, I think, what you're referring to, creating relationships, creating trust with the community, bonding with your students. Look at you. Look who you have here. It, it, it is so significant and it's so um, not all the time respected. I've seen principals. I've seen principals with doctorates from teachers college who no longer, and you know the, you know uh, who I'm talking about, who no longer works for the DOE, who had who put barbershops in schools, mm. you know, was building beauty salons in schools. Mm. I mean, doing everything for the community, was taking the kids who were coming home from jail. Wanted those kids, didn't run from those kids, welcomed those kids. I'm gonna give you a school. And this principal, to make a long and short, it wasn't that simple, but was kind of removed over oh, because your test scores mm -hmm. didn't match up. Mm -hmm. This guy was a legend in the community, supported by everyone, all the politicians, all the big ones, and is no longer working for the people. Black people are the only people in this country's history that came here in chains. Mm -hmm. We are not descendants of, of immigrants. That is not our narrative. Our narrative is one as descendants of slaves. As a result of that, the historical trauma that is passed down from generation to generation impacts how black people perform in our current school system. So it, if we're not dealing with the trauma, we're not serious about educating black people. Hey, this is Roxanne Shante, and right now you're in the classroom, Hip Hop 101. Please believe it, because you can't see Hip Hop Hip Hop 101. Hey everybody, this is David Banks, and I'm thrilled to be here today with the classroom, Hip Hop 101, with Dr. Blizzard. Hi, I'm Adele Jones, and this is the classroom, Hip Hop 101, with Dr. Blizzard. Chef Marilyn Moore, this is the classroom, Hip Hop 101, with Dr. Blizzard. Hi, it's Kyra, it's the classroom, Hip Hop 101, with Dr. Blizzard.